Hey everybody, Carla with Carla's Clever Crafts. Back to do a wreath. I know it's going to be another Easter theme. This one actually can be Easter or spring. Uh, we have a bunny hopping into the back of a truck here. The truck's full of eggs. Um, and it says, Welcome Friends on the sign. So, it, since it's not Easter specific, it could be used um, to get you through, clear through spring until summer. Okay, I'll go over first how um, I attached to this sign. It's rather thick, so my hole punch that I normally would use does not work on that. Um, so, to attach the pipe cleaners, I used E6000 glue, and it had a metal hanger on it right here on the sign. And I just pressed that down. I used my E6000 and my hot glue to put a big glob of glue over that and used a piece of fabric. I used Christmas fabric, but it's on the back of the sign. It's okay. No one's going to see. I just used my scrap, scrap pieces of ribbon or fabric that I have laying around. And I glued that down and let that dry so it's solid. And then I just took my pipe cleaner and wrapped it around here. And then I did the same thing down here, except I didn't have a metal hook to use. So I just... E6000 my pipe cleaner on, went over top of that with hot glue to give it extra security while the E6000 sets up and covered that with a piece of ribbon. Now on this end, I did double my pipe cleaner to make sure it was gonna be long enough to wrap around my wire frame. I think that the one up here, I just did a single. It should be long enough. We'll see when we get to that step. Okay, I'm gonna lay this over to the side here. We're going to make it on a 14 inch wireframe. I've kind of started here for us to cut down on our time on the video. Um, we're going to have six pipe cleaners on the inside, 12 on the outside, two rings. And in order to get that layout, what you do is you place one pipe cleaner in the, the, in between these crossbars is considered a section. There's six sections all the way around. You're going to put one pipe cleaner right in the middle of this section between the two crossbars on the two inside wires and then line up in the middle of this pipe cleaner and the crossbar and put one on the outside two wires in the middle come to the other side and do the same thing between the pipe cleaner and this crossbar and put one in the middle when you put all three in all six sections you'll have the right number with 12 on the outside and six on the inside <clears throat> okay, and then I'm also using, to go with my sign, I've chosen this light pink to pair up with it for our base layer of mesh to go around the bottom. And then when we do our second layer of mesh, I have this really pretty Easter. Um, it's pink and white and blue and green all woven together. It's a window pane design. And I thought that matched nicely with all of our colors and our sign. And then for the ribbons, we're going to be using this blue truck to match our sign with the bunny hopping in the back. And then we're gonna be using this egg ribbon to match all the eggs in the back of the truck. I did want to point out um, the blues in the two trucks don't match perfectly. Um, this is kind of more of a turquoise blue. This is more like a baby blue. Um, but it, it's going to be okay because we have numerous different blue patterns, blue collars, shades of blue. We have the blue eggs. We have the blue in the truck. We have a darker blue and a lighter blue. We have this blue. We have another. Uh, actually, this has two or three different shades of blue running through it. So it's gonna all tie together, um, and it's, it's not gonna affect our overall design that these two are not the exact same shade. So don't be afraid to use different shades of your colors. Okay, and then to match up with that um, blue truck and the eggs, I've chosen this yellow polka dot. And I went with that because we have some yellow in our truck, and then some of the eggs have polka dots on them. And then I did this pink and white check pattern that's really subtle. It's really light pink. And I did that because it, mass it matches the check pattern in the, in the ribbon behind the trucks here. Okay. 
So those are the ribbons and the meshes that we're going to be using. I, um, I'm i going to make this wreath available in a resupply kit that would be available in my Etsy shop. And it will include, include everything that you would need to make this wreath that I'm going to do tonight. Um, to go over real quickly, the mesh, the pink mesh, you're going to need 12 pieces of that cut, 16 to 17 inches. The Easter spring colors, you need six pieces of that cut 16 to 17 inches. And then with the ribbons, I have my two primary ribbons are the truck and the egg. And those are going to be cut to 12 inches long. And you're going to need nine of each of those at 12 inches. Okay, and then my secondary ribbons is the yellow polka dot and the pink and white check and you will need six of those also cut to 12 inch pieces, okay? So if you wanted to purchase this as a resupply kit, um, what you would get would be the wreath form, the wire wreath frame, the 18 pipe cleaners to add, you, all of your ribbons would come pre-cut to 12 inches long and you would get the number that I just mentioned. So nine of the primary, six of the secondary, and then, I'm um, not sure if I mentioned, but you would get 12 pieces of the pink pre-cut to 16 to 17 inches, and 12 of these, and six of this one pre-cut <clears throat> to 16 to 17 inches. And then the sign would also be included. So you would essentially, if you wanted to make this yourself and didn't want to go out and try to find all these different products at all these different places, um, you could purchase the resupply kit from my Etsy shop and have everything that you would need to make the design that we're going to work on tonight. As well, the final wreath when I finish it will be in, our, in my Etsy shop as well. Um, so the already completed design is, will be available for purchase. And the link to my Etsy shop on Facebook after the live video is concluded will be in the description of the video. Same way if you're watching on YouTube and you're interested in these items, it will be in the description down below the video on YouTube. Okay, so now that I got all those basics out of the way, we'll get started. The table's a little bit too full. So I've already gotten started on the base here. I've laid in 10 pieces of our deco mesh, and then I've also laid all of our ribbons, um, first layer of ribbons on top of those. I left this small section here so that I can show you how I did that. Um, so if, if you did purchase the resupply kit, you would also have this instructional video to use um, to know how to put the materials together. Where we're only working right now on these outside 12 pipe cleaners, so keep that in mind, we're not doing anything with these six on the inside yet, just leave them kind of pushed to the middle out of your way. Okay. And so to put the pink mesh on, we're going to do the crumple method. And this ribbon you'll notice, or this mesh when you pull it apart, it does fray pretty badly. That's why I like to use the crumple method because then we curl under these cut edges and they're protected from further fraying. So to do the couple method, you're just gonna fold it over, use your pinkies to keep the ends down and then roll it, two, three, four. Use a clip or a closed pin or something to hold your curl that you just made. Turn that clip away from you and do the same thing on the other end. Two, three, four. And it should look like this, two little curls on each end. Now turn it over with the curls face down and you're gonna scrunch small sections at a time up the middle to create a ruffled effect. Pinch the two sides together between your fingers and you should have what looks like a little bow tie. Okay. We're going to place our mesh on this bottom row with the finished edges to the outside and the inside. We're gonna do that all the way around because that then gives us a 24 inch wide, 24 to 25 inch wide 
wreath overall when we're finished. And then the wreath will be, um, once we add all the layers, it will be five to six inches deep. So it's a nice size. Okay, now we have one more to lay in here. So we'll do it one more time. I'm gonna try to load my comments again real quick. your mesh out with the side the curls up naturally face up fold it over use your pinkies to keep the edges down two three four hey Laura same thing on the other end make our curl and I do four times because that gets those cut edges rolled under really well so we avoid any fraying in our finished design. And place it in the exact same way. And you're going to do the 12 of these pink pieces all the way around those 12 pipe cleaners on the outside rings. Okay. And when you place in your last one, make sure you pull the one to the right out over top of the last one you place in. So your pattern stays consistent all the way around. Okay, and now with the pipe, with the ribbons, what you will do is you will take, you're gonna get six total of the yellow and white, six total of the pink and white. You're gonna take three of each and you're gonna fold them in half and cut them in half and make six, six inch pieces of the yellow, six, six inch pieces of the pink and white. And I'll show you how we lay this into, these six inch pieces are gonna go on the bottom, the base part of our wreath and I'll show you how we lay those in. We start with whichever color you want, do the yellow, and then you're gonna rotate pink and white, yellow, pink and white. So now the next one that we need is going to be yellow. When you cut your ribbon in half, don't dovetail this in. Your, all your ends, you will need to dovetail when you, when you get your ribbons. Don't dovetail the six inch piece on the opposite end. And the reason is because we're gonna scrunch that straight edge like that to put it inside of our pipe cleaner. And you want to lay the six inch piece so that it comes straight out the middle of the piece of mesh you're placing it on. Okay, and then the pink and white. And you just rotate those colors all the way around. Yellow, pink and white, yellow, pink and white. Placing them all the same way on the mesh coming straight out the middle of the piece of mesh you're placing it on top of. And then next we come in with our 12 inch pieces of the truck and the egg ribbon, our two primary ribbons. And I paired the egg over top of the yellow and the truck over top of the pink and white. So to place it in, we're just gonna lay it flat, scrunch it up the middle, V it back towards yourself to line up your ends so that you have an even amount on each side. It will look like this. And then you're just gonna place that straight down in over top of the piece of ribbon that you just placed so that it V's around the straight piece you just put in, the six inch piece. Give it a few good twists, cut off your extra, fold the end down inside and give it a good squeeze. Now we're ready to go to the next one. The egg goes over the yellow, so we're just rotating again. Egg, truck, egg, truck. And you're gonna do that all the way around for the 12 pipe cleaners. Make sure your primary ribbons, you do leave those at 12 inches because you're gonna place those in by being them around the six inch. I do that because then all of my ribbon ends will show and not layer over top of one another and hide some of the ribbon. And 
I just fluff my ends, my ribbon ends as I go. I push up on the inside there close to the pipe cleaner and then curl the outside edge down and under, kind of making like an arch. Okay, we got one more here. It's a truck. push it down inside and squeeze and I'm just gonna fix my ribbon tails here so they're all laying the same way should I got it backwards all the way around So that's what it looks like. And this is what I was talking about with being the 12 inch piece around the six inch piece. Now you can see all three pieces. Same way here with the yellow, you can see all three. Plus you can still see some of the pretty mesh that we put on the bottom, the pink mesh. Okay, so now we're ready to work on our second layer of mesh and we're gonna start working on the inside six pipe cleaners. So what we need to do is reach in and pull those to the outside. There are six of them, so make sure when you do this step, you pull all six to the outside. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing, the same method with these pieces of mesh. Very pretty and sparkly. Okay, so we're going to lay them out and we're going to roll the end under four. So we have our first curl. Now we'll turn it, the clip away from us and do the same thing on the other end. Making a curl on the other end. Turn the two curls face down and scrunch down the middle. Now this time, on this layer, we're gonna place our finished edges to the right and the left when we put it on the wreath. So it'll be like we're placing little bows all the way around the design. And that helps us to fill in where we may have some gaps where you can see down to the frame still. That will take care of that. So that's what it will look like when you lay it in, it's like little bows all the way around. When you add this second layer of mesh, do not pull it down in too far because you don't want to sink it to, down to your wireframe. You're wanting to build your design up as you go. So curl. little sections at a time to create a ruffle effect. Pinch the two sides together. Place it in. We'll do six of these for all six of the pipe cleaners that we pulled to, from the inside to the outside.
three more. With this design, if you wanted to, you could add some Easter eggs, um, glue, attach them with hot glue to the top. You could also do some florals. Um, you could always take it over the top by adding some additional embellishments. Um, I'm going to only be using the mesh and the ribbons on this one. Uh, but I do have other videos, if you're interested, where I've added other embellishments if you wanted to check those out. like so far. Very pretty. Lots of Easter pastel colors in there. Okay, to do our ribbons on the top will be a little bit different. We will, instead of making a V, we will be making an X. You're going to crisscross your ribbons, scrunch right up the middle, Pinch the two sides together, hold them between your fingers, <coughs> excuse me, then we're going to place it straight down in our pipe cleaner, give it a good twist three or four times, remember don't pull too tight, you don't want to sink everything down inside to the flatten your design. going to fluff out my tails the same way I did around the bottom, kind of arching them outward, curling the ends under. Okay. Now we're going to do the yellow polka dot with the egg. We're going to do the exact same thing. Make sure when you're putting your ribbons in, you keep your pretty side up. Make an X, scrunch down the middle. The same way. The ribbons that I'm using um, are all two and a half inch, except for the yellow polka dot. It is a one and a half inch. Um, if you have yellow polka dot and two and a half inch, though, that would work just as well. to the truck in the pink and we're just going to rotate the pattern, the same pattern all the way around.
And if you wanted to, if you were making this wreath, you could always put the yellow ribbons behind the truck and put this pink behind the egg to more evenly distribute this pink throughout the wreath. As I'm looking at it here, I kind of wish I had done that. You, know, you can always pair them differently um, than the person, myself, or whoever you're watching demonstrates. Just suit your own taste. There's really no right or wrong way in doing this. It's just whatever you're comfortable with and what appeals to your taste, or if you're selling them, your customers. substitute out the colors. If you didn't like the way the yellow looked, you could use a pale blue or any of the other colors that are in the signs or the meshes. Um, you could use a blue. Um, probably you could try a purple, like a light purple. Possibly even a green because there's some green on the sign. So you can have fun with it and you know, make it exactly this way or you can make it your own. More set of ribbons after this one. I fluff my ribbons as I go. Um, that's also an optional thing. You can do them after you finish the whole layer, so you can do them as you go. It's whichever you're most comfortable with. I think I do mine as I go just because I like to see the appearance come together as I work. No right or wrong way for that. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And right now we're ready to add our sign. And since we've already went over how to put the pipe cleaners on it to attach it, the sign is pretty heavy. So we're going to have to make sure that it's good and secure. And I'm going to place it in here so that one of the truck ribbons is sitting right at the bottom of it here. And I'm going to pull out this really pretty spring mesh and try to have it framing around the sign. The sign will sit in just a little bit, or it will appear like it's sitting inside a little bit because I'm going to use this mesh to frame around it. Then we just need to reach underneath, find our pipe cleaners, pull it through the mesh and the ribbon. And wrap it around those inside two wires on your wreath frame. This is a bit challenging, getting it through all the mesh, so just be patient with it and take your time. Okay. Now this sign has some weight to it, and I've already got it sitting nicely down inside my mesh the way that I want, so I'm not going to pull down on it because it'll sink it too far into my design. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to twist my pipe cleaners around each other a good probably 10 or 15 times. And I'm going to clip off the ends. I'm going to leave about a one and a half to two inch piece on there. And then I'm going to wrap that piece around the inside ring of my wire frame. And I do that so that I can push the two pointed ends, the two sharp ends of the pipe cleaner up inside of the frame. So 
and nobody gets hurt. And then turn it around, repeat the same exact process at the top. And now that I look at this, I probably did not need to extend the pipe cleaner on the bottom to make it longer because the sign is big enough that those pipe cleaners would have reached easily. Um, but I just aired on the side of safety. I didn't want to have to stop and extend them in the middle of our video. Okay. And this pink mesh, you can go around and pull some of that out if you want so that it's showing after you get your sign where you want it. Or you could just leave it tucked in and have your spring collar meshes framing your sign with your pink showing around the edges. That's entirely up to you. Now this pipe cleaner is not, I don't have any excess to cut off of this, but I'll show you. Um, I wrap it around itself a bunch of times and then I come in and I just pick whichever wire it's closest to on the ring and I wrap it around. Well, it's hard for me to do from that angle. Wrap it around that ring several times and then I just push my ends up into the inside. So that way it's nice and smooth. And here's our finished design for this evening, guys. Very cute, very springy. So just a, um, let me know what you think of it in the comments if you watch this. If you watch on replay, be sure to comment hashtag replay. Um, and remember, this wreath will be available for sale in my Etsy shop in the, um, hopefully by tomorrow. And then I'm also going to be selling the wreath kit. And the reason I came up with that idea, you guys, is because I wish I had known somebody that made that option available when I first started making wreaths because you can get a more affordable price and start learning to make wreath designs without having to buy four full 10 yards of ribbon and full rolls of the mesh and full price for your signs and your materials and shopping at three or four different locations. This way, one thing, everything comes in one box. You only have to pay for the amount that you actually need so you don't have to buy all that extra and then have it laying around to maybe use in the future or maybe not. I have ribbons from when I first started that I've never used because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know which ones to purchase, how to pair them together, how to design them to make them look the way that I wanted to. So part of the learning curve resulted in a lot of wasted money. <laughs> so I thought this would be a way to offer you guys an opportunity to buy just the supplies that you need. It would save you money and give you a chance to start learning to do this. Plus you'll have this instructional video that tells you exactly how to do this. So thank you guys again for watching and everybody have a wonderful evening and I'll probably see you back here tomorrow.